Theoretically, we may have an issue on the cylinder that we just did a dry static compression test, a wet static compression test, a running compression test on, but we still might not know exactly what's happening just based upon those tests, including the vacuum test as well. So another test that we can do, which is sort of almost like the end-all be-all, is the cylinder leak down test. So we're actually going to inject air into this cylinder and we're going to see how much air is lost or how much air comes out. And depending on where it comes out, we'll know what sort of problem we have and what we need to do next. Maybe this vehicle needs an engine because the piston rings are fried and it's just not worth rebuilding. Maybe we could get away with replacing the head and possibly on this particular vehicle, that may be cost effective for the customer. So this is just going to give us more information. Now, what we need to do first is to make sure that we are at top dead center, meaning the piston is all the way up at the top of its travel of the compression stroke, which means that both valves are closed and seated in the cylinder head. And so this way, that combustion chamber should be completely sealed and there should not be any air leaking out. Now to make sure that we're at top dead center of the compression stroke, first we need to rotate our crankshaft. Now sometimes it is easily accessible to just turn the crankshaft directly, but on this particular system um, it's easier just to turn the alternator, which is attached to the accessory belt, which is then in turn attached, attached to the harmonic balancer on the crankshaft. We always want to rotate the engine in the direction of its normal travel. So typically on most engines, that's clockwise. Not to say that there aren't counterclockwise rotating engines out there, but typically we just want to go with straight up clockwise, okay? So obviously I'm attached to the alternator, but as I rotate the alternator, you can see that the belt is also moving. And as this belt is moving, it's also rotating the crankshaft around. So as I'm rotating the crankshaft, I like to put my finger over top of the adapter for the cylinder leak down tester. And that way I can feel if there's any pressure buildup and I know that I'm on my compression stroke. So for you guys to see that, okay, you can also use a little piece of paper. You can see it jump up. Now that we know we're on the compression stroke, another nice thing to do is to use the oil dipstick to let us know if we are at the very top. So we're just going to observe the top of the dipstick and see when it reaches near the top of its travel. We'll notice because it'll start to slow down. Now I like to stop just right before top dead center because that will help the engine, or help to prevent the engine from rotating once we apply pressure to it. Because once it's rotated, then we're at bottom dead center, not top dead center. That should be top dead center right there. It is kind of tricky. It takes a, little, a few times to get used to doing that. Okay. Now we just screw in our adapter again. We're ready to hook up our gauge. Now the cylinder leak down tester operates off of shop air. So first we need to plug this in. Pull the collar back, push, release, okay. And then we're going to look at our, basically our pressure going in gauge. So we just need to pull this regulator down okay, and adjust it so that only 100 PSI is going to be sent through the regulator, through the hose and down into the cylinder. And then we just close it and now, now 
Now we can hook it up to our adapter. And we can see that it says we have about almost 90% leakage, um, which on a good engine like this, shouldn't have. So the question is, what happened? Well, what happened is that our engine rotated. So now we're at bottom dead center again, because all of that pressure, that 100 PSI that went in, pushed that piston down. Now, on this gauge, it also says that up to 40% leakage is okay, but that's not really the case. Typically, we want to look for like zero to 10% leakage. Okay, right in here. Anything above 20 is really questionable. Once you get to 30, there's definitely a problem. So now I've rotated the engine over one more time, top dead center, and I ensured that it didn't rotate. Now there's really no way to stop it from rotating if you try to hold the ratchet so that it doesn't rotate anymore, then you could get your hand broken. So let's try not to do that. Okay. It may take a few tries, but you'll get it eventually. Okay. So now we're in the low point, just above 10% leakage. So that's good. Now if we did have a leakage problem, we could listen from the dipstick to see if there's any possibility of the rings not sealing properly and therefore air blowing down into the crankcase and the crankcase is where all the oil is and therefore it will hiss or it will release some of the air out of the dipstick tube. So if there was a leak, we could hear it maybe from here if we had that problem. Now if we had a problem where a valve was bent or burnt or somehow allowing air to get past it and leak out through the exhaust, we could remove this oxygen sensor and hear it hissing or hear that air flowing out of that oxygen sensor hole. Now, if you tried to listen at the tailpipe, you might not hear very much because the air would have to travel all the way through the entire exhaust system, through the converter, and through the muffler before you're able to really hear anything. Now, we can also have air leaking out of an intake valve just like it could be leaking out of an exhaust valve. So what you would do is open up this throttle body plate by uh, having someone depress the accelerator pedal and listen for any air coming out of here. So if there's air coming out of here, it's leaking out of the combustion chamber through the intake manifold and out of your throttle body. And then you know you have a problem with your valve, just like the exhaust, either burnt or bent, or anything else that would prevent the air from sealing, potentially even a bad valve seat as well. Another place to check is the radiator filler cap or the surge tank. Wherever there is a pressure cap located, take that off, take a look at the fluid, and see if you see tiny bubbles. If you see bubbles, then that means that air is leaking through the head gasket, through all the coolant passages, and coming out here. So that means that you have a bad head gasket or potentially sometimes the head can even be damaged or cracked. So always let your customers know ahead of time that you know, it's probably a bad head gasket but once we get the head off we may find that it needs a head repaired or replaced as well. That's it for now. Thanks for watching.